March primary. Right. I think yes. people that they're very hungry for that and they're desperate for it. We need to see it. Okay. Where are you on open carry? Open carry is a, a I see open carry in terms of I think in terms of the language um, in our Second Amendment and and. And I understand the, the whole concern about open carry and what happens if you go into a church, what happens if you go into a bar, you know, the public nuisance or, or fine. Um, but philosophically, I think that people ought to have the right to open carry. We have a statute that has n not caused one problem that I'm aware of right. o over 17 years. And that is uh, our concealed handgun license. Right. All right. So for 17 years, we've had, um, I'm on my third concealed <laughs> handgun license. All right. And, um, and as uh, Jerry Patterson likes to kid, I've known him for a long time, there hadn't been one shootout at one intersection between angry motorists. All right. So, uh, so now that has to be balanced. So this is going to take some weeks and some months. I was just asked today, what's my position for an open carry for, I think, long guns, um, a demonstration on Saturday. Uh, I'm a firm believer, and we've got to work out the details, but I'm a firm believer in, in that every law-abiding American should have the full benefits of their Second Amendment rights. Amen. Yeah. All right? Yes. That's what I believe. Now, um, do you want people with long guns and pistols walking into your school, your child's playground? I don't know. No. You know, I, you know. But so, so there are a couple of nuances here from the public nuisance point of view. Um, do you, uh, again, but philosophically, uh, I'm going to lean towards. Uh, that you should enjoy, be able to enjoy all the benefits of your Second Amendment rights if you're a law-abiding American. Yes. Uh, so that's what I believe. Now we we've got to be able to. I've, I've got to work with the legislators. I've got to work with law enforcement. I, I get everybody pulled together, but I believe we can get it done. Yes, one, one last question for me. Okay, this on school security. Yes, sir. And guns. Right. We've got, you know, this uh, Sky Marshal program that seems to work for uh, right. planes. Right. Usually there's not a Sky Marshal on board. I don't know what percentage of they are on. Sequestration. But see, <laughs> yeah. we, if we just had a policy that there may be a Sky Marshal or a Teacher Marshal in school that's concealed carrying, it seems like it would take away a lot of targets yes. you and I you and I ought to talk more because uh, um, I'm agreeing with everything you've said yeah. let me tell you what I did this year okay I got so upset with the shootings up in Connecticut uh, last fall uh, that that I know in our urban schools we generally have either independent school district police officers or we have city police but how about all the rural? Most of the people in the state of Texas today, that's going to change over the next 25 years, most of the people in the state of Texas don't live in Dallas and Fort Worth and, um, and uh, San Antonio and Austin, Houston, Corpus Christi, and El Paso. Uh, they live in Tyler, Longview. They live in, in, and I don't think Longview is rural. I don't think this Tyler is rural, but it's not in in the mega cities right here. Right. That's going to change uh, because 53% of our population lives in these areas. But uh, you've got a lot of school districts, I'm thinking of one uh, in particular near Wichita Falls, that is 30 minutes away from the nearest first responder. The closest police officer is 30 minutes. And that superintendent, I've had him down in my office twice. Under state law today, I think this is interesting. Under state law today, a school district can authorize uh, school personnel on an anonymous or public basis. Uh, they, they can authorize them to carry a uh, handgun. What this gentleman has done is with the authority of his school board, 
the superintendent, has selected, gone out and handpicked teachers to get their CHL, and he's paid for triple, quadruple uh, training, and he, and he retrains them each summer. And when I talked to him, it made so much sense. Because he said, why in the world would I want to pay minimum wage to a high school grad that I don't know, when, when I'd much rather pay for the course for a, a woman that has a master's degree <laughs> that I've known for 25 years, that's cool as a cucumber, that I've never seen her flappable ever. Uh, this is the perfect person. So he does it on a completely anonymous basis. There are, sir, there are, I can't tell you the number, but there are many sky marshals in those schools. And everyone knows them, and no nut is going to go near those schools because they'll get shot in the process if they try to do something. I felt so strongly about that, and I got criticized. But I passed legislation having the state pay for the training. Yeah. Because if you, yeah. seriously, Tommy, for the state paying for the training, because I want safe schools. And if you can't, you're in a situation where you can't get city police or uh, your ISD police, then by God, we're going to have well-trained people. And I don't want the cost, cost to be the prohibiting factor that would have saved some youngsters' lives. So I feel very strongly about that. Yeah, the cost aspect. is so much cheaper if you're training, yes. you know, for the training of teachers yeah. and custodians or whoever totally. than hiring somebody who... Totally. Not only that, but it's more effective because you don't know who they are. Right. You don't know who they are, and so therefore you can't plan around them. Yeah. That's, 